to get over it for you. Yeah. Only car I want to go to. What's up everybody, Big Herc 916 You're tuned in to another edition of my vlog. And you know I'm a big car guy, and I'm always talking about going to different car events and you know talking with different car enthusiasts. Well, I have a legend with me here today. I was fortunate enough to be hooked up with a friend of mine through Joe to meet Keith Kotcher, a custom hot rod builder, a legend in the game. And uh, I'm gonna let him kind of talk a little bit about his background, his car history, and you guys, this is uh, gonna be an amazing interview, so make sure you guys stay tuned and take some notes on this one. So Keith, tell the people a little bit about yourself, man. Hi, I'm Keith Coucher. I'm a custom car designer and, and builder. I do restoration work mostly when it comes to building stuff, but uh, I'm actually building a car right now for myself. First one in, God, in over 10 years. And this one I plan on doing the bulk of the work. I'm not going to job much of it out except for the fine body work. But essentially, I've been doing uh, car things since I was a little kid. I was just crazy about cars, uh, literally from the time I could talk. My parents say the first thing I did was ask them what kind of car was that. And uh, basically, my dad would tell me, and I'd never forget. So uh, it's just been a passion of mine. My dad one day was sitting there drawing a, an airplane for me because he was an aircraft engineer at the time and he was showing me how to draw an airplane. I said, well, Dad, draw me a car. So he drew me a picture of his 61 Buick Special and I was like, oh, that's cool. And I kept that thing. I had it taped up on a wall and I used to sit there and try and draw it, try and draw it. And I wish I still had that picture today, but I don't. But unfortunately, uh, it got lost and I just continued doing what I do, which is draw pictures of cars. And uh, basically my passion uh, became my business. So take us around your office. I mean, you've got a lot of interesting stuff in here as far as like models and stuff and, and mock-ups and re renderings. Um, like what are some of the stuff here you have in the office? It's all, a lot of cool stuff here. Well, basically, um, my second passion uh, after drawing cars was, was building scale models. Uh, I had an uncle who built car models and I kind of just used to sit in his room and sit there and look at him with my hands like this or tuck in my fans because I couldn't touch them, you know. Uh, but I think that's where the creative gene came out of, you know, sitting there staring at those models and thinking what I would do to them different. Uh, so basically, as a, a kid starting around nine years old, I started buying car models and started building them and building them and get better and better at them. And be, before long, I started taking the cars and cutting them up and turning them into my dream. So I draw something out and I build it into something else. This is this one right here is one of my uh, ideas. It's a, this is a die cast of a 68 Cougar Fastback. Oh, that's my, one of my cars right there. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this was something I, I did in Photoshop, just playing around one night, bored. And then I put it on the internet, and it's exploded. And any time you see a Cougar Fastback, it's usually mine. Uh, there's a white and blue one, and there's a, a, a black and gold one, or and a, and a gold and black one. Uh, anyway, so I built this one into scale, and I built a couple of them. There's another one over here that's it's done in scale. Have, you, have any of these cars came to fruition um, physically, or...? Uh, I don't know if any of these... Well, yes, Black Nasty, this is my car here. That, that became a real car, which was a, a Shelby replica. And this one, which is the Boss Snake, which I did for good guys. 
So that that was a design. Was that, that car at SEMA also? Yeah, it was at SEMA. It was at uh, all the good guy shows in 2010. Um, it um, went to Grand, I think it was a Grand National Roadster show. I think yeah. I've seen that. So, SEMA. yeah, it was a pretty big deal car in, in 2010. Um, so that, that that's a couple that became real cars. So do, do you work hands-on with a lot of the people that as far as the builders, once they start building after they kind of keep the the authenticity of your rendition or how do you kind of work with them as far as with the mock-ups? Um, I have some, some of my clients will actually have me uh, do a uh, a job captain, you know, a job captain for them. I'll, okay. I'll run the job for them. So essentially, I will be the the, the go between the owner and the shop. Okay. And so a, a lot of times when I do that, they basically will give me control of, of the money, so that I can basically determine what's good work and what's not good work. And so I'll tell them, hey, uh, yeah, pay them this week because they did the job right, or you know, hold off till they get. This oh man, right. I needed to a couple years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I've I've been doing that for for people, uh, and of course, a lot of the builders will call me up and ask me, well, you know, hey, uh, how did you want this, or what, what, do you, how exactly do you think you're, we're going to do this, you know? And because I do have a kind of a hands-on deal, because I've been doing stuff since I was, you know, like 14 years old, actually, technically, mechanically working on cars, and in my 20s started doing, you know, body body work and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to do it for a profession, but I can do it. So when I will get called in by a shop that's saying, hey, you know, how do you want me to bow these fenders, you know? Well, I'll look at it and I'll say, well, I'm no expert, but I would probably take and slice it here and pull the fender out, you know, slice it here when you, to relieve it a little bit more. Once you got it out, then I would cut a diamond piece and then, you know, tack that in place. And anyway, I, I, you know, I had that happen one time with the shop and the guy who was the builder was was looking at me like I was some kind of prima donna because I draw cars for a living, and you know, like, oh, how exactly expect me to do that, you know? And I kind of told him, I said, well, that's that's what I would do, you know. Next time I see him, he comes right up to me, puts his hand out, oh man, we did what you said, and it worked out great. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's like I I have a, a, a feel for how it needs to be, and that I think that puts me a little bit higher than some of the designers are out there because a lot of the guys just are cars car, car drawers. They just draw. They, so they a lot of people they don't they don't know your whole background. So they're thinking, oh, this guy's just an artist. Not know you've been hands on. Oh yeah, yeah. I, like I said, I've I've built probably fifteen twenty cars in my life. You okay. Know? I mean, which isn't a ton, but for a guy that doesn't hold himself out as a professional builder, that's pretty. That's a lot. It's probably a few cars. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and, I, and I, most of them were my cars, but still, I mean, I built them. I took them all apart, put them all back together. You know, I work in the automotive industry as an expert witness as well because of, because of that. I have I have shop uh, shops that have been sued by by. Um, Clients that have basically said, "Hey, you did a crappy job on my build. And this is wrong, and this is wrong." And I'd go and I look at the car, and I go, "Man, that's everything's done right, man." You know, and then I'd go and testify in court, write a report, oh, wow. you know, and do that. And I've I've done it for the opposite side. I've done it for guys that had a bad shop. The guy did a crap job, and I'd go over the car and say, "Yeah, that's crap, man." And I'd type like 130 things wrong and write a big report and come back and you know be test you know testify on the stand and everything about it. So. You know, I have that expertise behind me, and so when I draw something on paper, I know it's going to work. I'm not drawing something that's just going to be like, oh yeah, maybe the builder will figure it out. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff on Instagram. I'm always looking at different posts and different people's, uh, uh, basically their pages, and there's these crazy re renderings, but I'm like, damn, it, can somebody actually make that? But to actually see the stuff that you have drawn being made, I think that's just really impressive because a lot of people... You know, it's just a picture, but to see it on the road is something different. Yeah, and a lot of them, you know, it, it's it's when you... Photographs a lot of times don't do cars justice. You know, you, you'll see a car and it looks cool in a photograph, but then when you actually see it, there's a presence about it. You know, it's like, you know, I did the 60 Buick that was uh, a big deal in uh, 2016. It finally came out. It took them nine years to get the car done, but it was one of those cars that when you saw it in photos, you went, oh, that thing's cool. And when you were actually next to it, you'd be like, oh man, it looks like it'll bite your leg off. It's yeah. So, it's so aggressive, you know. So it's it, it's one of those things where a lot of the cars I do, they have that kind of feel about them. It's like when you actually see the car in person, you're like, oh my God, that's unbelievable, you know. And it's just a, it's just a matter of detail, you know. So. And what do you have right now that we can take a look at that you're, you, you know, you're going to be working on or some of the stuff that you have? I know you say you have some projects you're looking forward to completing. 
Um, I've got a 67 Falcon I'm doing. It's a, it actually technically is a 69 Falcon. I bought a 67, got it got it home and started getting into it, digging into it, and just finding there was just holes, man. I mean, just like rust holes everywhere. And digging it just, it was like, like just endless <laughs> stuff just falling out of it. So I said, well, this thing is toast. I, I may have to find another one. So my buddy Joe, we're, he told me, I mean, I know where one of those cars is, you know, it's right over here in Culver City. So one day we were out running around and, oh, you want to see that, that Falcon? I said, yeah, yeah, let's go buy this. So we went over there. We we went over and seen it. And so I was kind of disappointed because it was a 69, you know, and I was like, I don't like the 69. I got the square lights. I like the round lights, you know. And so uh, I said, well, oh, shit, I got the 67. I can probably move on the, to the quarter panels on, which is what I did. And I'll, I'll show you here. I'll show you the difference between the two, you know. But uh, in any case, that's the current car. And then I've got a, a 64 Fairlane I've been working on since 2014. This was a car, a buddy of mine had taken this to a shop, spent like $12,000, had this thing do full, you know, rotisserie, resto. And the guy, all the guy did was do a paint job. Ugh. I mean, he didn't do anything. I mean, the underside looked just like 1964. The engine bay, like just 1964, used. So I got it with a fresh paint job, and I had to do all the restoration underneath, in the engine bay, in the interior, everything, with, with the thing with a fresh paint job on it, which was tough, because I couldn't be blast anything. I had to, everything had to be chemical or hand sand to get it down smooth. Anyway, it's over there. I'm actually having to uh, redo the four speed. We had it had a um, had a bad bow housing, so it had a vibration. So I took it back apart. So it's up on stands, but you can see the car. It's really pretty. Okay, well let's take a look out there.